What is going on YouTube? I'm back once again with finally the start of something a little bit different. I was going to actually start on a review, but instead we're going to be bringing you uh, the last uh, the last game that we played uh, in BT8's format for Digimon. Unfortunately, uh, EX2 is actually delayed here in the UK, so I haven't been able to get our hands on it. So we're still playing in that BT8 format whilst we wait for it to arrive. Probably won't be able to get any new footage until July uh, in terms of the new meta, but just wanted to bring you guys a little bit of footage from what we've been shooting whilst we've been playing the game throughout all of BT8. Unfortunately, some of the footage, this one is no exception, does have a little bit of an awkward camera angle as we're still trying to figure out uh, how to get this overhead set up whilst we're out and about. But I hope you guys enjoy the video nonetheless. This is definitely the closest game we've played for all of BT8. So without further ado, let's get on into it. start things off since I am going to be going first we're going to open up with that BT1 Upamon and go straight into the jamming Vmon for a little bit of early aggression. We're going to keep the board nice and empty and start things off with a blue memory boost looking for that top four for the Ragermon whereas we're going to be seeing Shakumon start up with that Salomon the ST10 one that lets you DNA Digivolve at the end of your turn. And then go up into the Ankylomon directly over that. I'm going to pass the turn with Kari Kamiya, get that memory tamer out nice and early. Pass it back to me with three memories, so plenty to play with to go into this next turn. Promote the Vmon with jamming. And since there's nothing on the field, I'm not going to get the draw one off the empty Digimon, but we will swing straight into a Chimeramon, but jamming going to keep that Vmon up. So, decent start. Still got three memory to play with. We are going to Digivolve in to the Magnemon, get that standing. And crack the blue memory boost to go up to two. I know Jester's actually run Hammer Spark in this deck. So I'm just moving myself out of the Hammer Spark zone. Going to pass the turn with a memory tamer of my own. Blue and green target there, going to take that BT8 Vmon, get that two color search later on. And the Ankylomon is going to come out now. The Magnemon without any armors in trash is going to be sitting at seven with blocker. So can stop some early aggression here, but just more likely going to be setting up to try and go nice and wide. We can see the Shakuamon is in her hand. It is a Shakuamon security control. So not really expecting too much aggression early on the start. Yeah, we are gonna see the Salamon this time, the BT3 Salamon, and go straight into Angemon. End of turn inheritable is going to get us that DNA digivolution. So Shakuamon gonna be coming out. Technically the Ankylomon should be on top of the Angemon because it is yellow blue, and the Angemon in this case is going to be the blue. So just making sure that the draw for Digivolve happens first and then the recovery does come off after that. Since it was DNA Digivolution, can return uh, a level five or less to the hand. So Magnum on back in my hand, everything else underneath it gets trashed. So we're going back up this time is the all four starter deck Vmon that comes out straight into Ragermon get that set up for the next turn and a Davis and Ken. It's gonna pass over to three anyway. And this means we'll be going with at least five memory to start that next turn. So Salomon going to be raised up in nursery. And just like we're going to go for the Digivolution into Mirage Galgamon here. Pretty solid play here, gets two memory back off of the four cost Digivolution, which is going to keep it on her turn because at this point, I had at least eight cards in hand. I just hit the Davis for a two search and the Digivolutions have been going off. So very easy turbo. 12K goes straight through that Pyodramon in security. And a reinforced memory boost is gonna pass the turn over straight to five memory. As the Shakuamon to hand and the Starmon's gonna be going into the top of security. And she'll have that extra three memory to play with in the next turn. So we are going to go up to seven here, start things off with the Fire Rocket, go in with Lydramon. We do know that Starmons is on top and a pretty weak Salamon in security there. So we're going to armor texture, 
get that Rager Martin out of here, put in a fresh one, comes in, draw for Digivolve, it's going to cost two, and it's still got that fire rocket, so it'll crash once into the Angemon, which is unfortunate, but the second hit goes into an option card, so the Vmon is going to be chilling underneath it, we'll Digivolve for three, and once again, restand, draw, and swing for two. I believe we have two trash, yeah, it looks like we had less than 12. So Magnemon would have been at 11, so it will crash out. But a pretty solid start. She gave us a lot of memory there for the reinforced memory boost, and we pretty much wiped it all out. And we will pass the turn with the blue memory boost, because we do know that everything that comes out level 3 is going to get bounced or deleted. Unfortunately, going to be sending the Davis and that Megadeth to the bottom of the deck. But all in all, a pretty good turn off the armor texture and fire rocket. just shows how dangerous this deck can be when given enough memory to play with. And if you get pretty fortunate, obviously wasn't running the jamming beam on there. So if the security was a little bit stronger earlier on, might not have been able to do so much damage. But Jess is going to be swinging back now. Shakuamon once again makes an appearance. This time going over the Angemon, so it gets that Digivolution. Recovery plus one, so plus two off of a Digivolve. And she's still got memory to play with. That Kari adding one memory for adding security back. Shakumon going to be swinging now. Hits into the Lydramon. Nice and simple. That's three Lydramon now down. I think we've only got one left in either the deck or hand. And swinging in to the Fire Rocket. Pretty useless in security. No blockers on the field. Two memories still to play with. And we're going to see the Hammer Spark push that up to three. And the Keelamon going to be coming out for three because we have a yellow Digimon on the field in Shakumon. And she's actually going to go super wide here. Only three security left, so looking to try and force the game to end. Empty board, so not much I can do in response to try and get that blocker out without passing the turn, really. So here I realize the the blue memory boost is in the trash accidentally just from when things were getting picked up. So we put that back out. We're going to put the BT8 Vmon searching for that dual color Digimon. We've got the Lydramon there, that final Lydramon. We are going to scoop that one back up. Imperative for memory here. As three of them have already hit the trash pretty early on, all things considered. We're going to crack that blue memory boost and move back out to two. And did you evolve up into the Lydramon in Nursery? Guarantee that we've got that memory going into the next turn. Going to see the blocker come out here for Magnamon. Obviously can't do anything about that Mirage Galgamon as it is unblockable. At the very least it might be able to have us crash into something as it is bigger than everything except... Well, it's even bigger than the Mirage Galgamon, but obviously unblockable. Magnamon can't do anything about that. At least three armors in trash right now. The Unzulon Mon going to be coming out for three. And we'll see Patamon crash straight into security. Hits a Vmon. It's enough to get rid of it. Not really sure why the Aquilimon deletes here, but she does hit into the Mega Death, which is going to suspend and bounce the Mirage Galgamon. Get that out of here. So the Aquilimon should still be on the field. But it's not something that we caught until the recording. I think she was just swinging in, expecting it to die. Just adding up. That is four armors in trash. So I'm sitting at 15, even with the minus three from the Shakumon inheritance. We're sitting at 12, so it would crash in and would kill off the Azulon Mon in response. Considering it, she is currently sitting at zero memory, so it needs to figure out how she's going to go back up. Really thinking about that attack. And she is going to commit to the attack. Draw one off of the Upamon Inheritable. So we're going to see that Magnemon come through with the block. And the Vmon actually stays up because the... Plus DP from the Magnemon does persist onto the Vmon that's underneath it, so the minus 3000 doesn't instantly kill the Vmon underneath. It's a cool little tech. 
and does help that Vmos stay alive after blockers when playing into the yellow matchup. We're gonna go straight up to five memory off of Davis and Ken. I'm gonna see the Flame Dramon come down and Fire Rocket. Match made in heaven, gonna swing in for eight, two checks, but it is gonna die. I'm gonna see Lydramon clean up to end the first game. Definitely sucks there for Shakurmon hitting into that Megadeth insecurity when it was pretty much game for her. Definitely allowed me to come away with the round win. We're going to see Shikumon opening up first. Patamon and Anjumon, identical Digivolutions to that first game. An Upamon of my own coming out. And the jamming Vmon. So, a little bit of deja vu here to go into this second game. Davis once again will pass the turn over with one memory. Only one target this time. We're going to see that Magnamon go to hand. And that second Davis and Fire Rocket will go to the bottom of the deck. Angemon comes out of Nursery. And we're going to see the straight Digivolution over to Shakurmon. Get that security up nice and early. Pops up to six. And we're just going to crash it straight back down. It's a Salamon. It's a jamming not even needed. See BT8 Vmon come through once again. I am running four of those in this deck. Do like the ability to search dual colors. Obviously, it does shuffle through the deck quite quickly with how many searches you're doing. But the Davis and Ken, so important to the way that this deck functions. We're going to see the Magnamon come out. It is just a 7k blocker, so it's not going to be putting a stop to Shakuamon. Angemon, once again, going to be going up in Nursery, a three cost Digivolution. Just trying to set up for another Shakurmon, if need be. And 6k can go over most of the armors. It's only Pyildramon, the option cards, and Magnamon as well. That you need to watch out for. You can see that thing on screen. You do want to see some new weekly content from a new creator. Breaking into the Digimon space, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can catch us. Hopefully future videos will have slightly better camera angles as we just get used to recording this sort of content. Some of our older footage has even weirder camera angles as we kind of get used to it. Gonna see Shakurmon swing straight into security, not gonna block it with the Magnamon, gonna keep it on the field. And we are gonna see Angemon's Inheritable bounce the Vmon back to hand. When Shakurumon is the lead Digimon, I do tend to play a little bit more aggressively with these searches as it lets me bounce it straight back to the hand to get the search call. But speaking of bounce, all four Speedramon comes down on top of Shakurumon. The four bounces back any level four or lower Digimon, so that's going to be Magnamon pops straight back to the hand and everything else underneath it goes to the trash. EX1 Vmon goes up in the nursery, trying to get ready for some Magnamon plays. And once again, the Force Search is going to hit into two Lydramons. We'll grab once and the rest at the bottom of the deck. And unfortunately, the Vmon is going to die this time. But we're going to get that Lydramon up in Raising once again. And the Angemon is out. So, potential to swing here. And then just get that Digivolution. Or she might try and just confirm it. And we are going to see that All Force Vidramon swing at security. Minus 3000 DP is it going to delete the Vmon and she gains one memory off of both Patamons, actually. Very strong. So it goes plus two off of that. Definitely something that I hadn't accounted for and is going to cost me. So three memory to work with here. One Digimon successfully attacked. And sitting on five security. Just really taking her time here thinking about how she's going to play this. I do believe we're going to be seeing a hardcore just to try and go a little bit wide. It's identified that we're on three and also when the stack gets this big and the minus 3000 DP does start to come out makes it very very difficult for armor rush really to get back in without the aid of a mega death like we saw in the first game. Salomon will indeed come out. And she is going to pass the turn, just going wide here to threaten. 
because the Lajramon has come out, so it's not like it's going to be able to suspend anything. We hit straight into a Hammer Spark, definitely not what you want to see. Especially because this Lygermon really was just trying to crash into something, disappear, and then we'll Digivolve up on top of it, get that EX1 Vmon recovery. So losing two memory on the first attack definitely stings. We're going to see the Ice Wall come down. Now that I've lost that memory, going to have to try and just slow down the pace to give me time to really make use of a five memory turn. I wasn't really prepared be playing with such low memory and we are going to see that Mega Death coming through. Nothing on the field really for her to pop and more importantly because it is the All Force Vigimon getting popped here she's not going to be able to go straight back into Shakuamon by bouncing it to hand. The Shakuamon is going to go to the drop zone and she draws into a second All Force Vigimon that definitely hurts. Just going to leave the Ice Wall on the field just to remind her so that way we don't have an instance of playing it and then forgetting to activate its abilities. Win rate 60% gonna be coming down for two memory cost. And she puts down the Chimeramon, but is gonna switch that back. The Chimeramon is gonna be the Digivolution, but actually wants to put the Sylphimon in the drop. Because then Chimeramon's Digivolution is gonna let her place one underneath, and that's gonna be putting a yellow, red. So now yellow, red, blue, and of course white, four colours. Plus minus 4,000 to the Lydramon. And is also going to be swinging for 12k during this turn. Let's draw for Digivolve and the Starmon is going to go up back in the raising area. Pondering here, she figures out how she's going to do this. Knows that she doesn't really have the memory. Any Digivolution will pass the turn. And does want to make use of the minus DP. Is going to swing at the security. Oh, swing at the Lydramon, rather. And we did have a little bit of confusion here. Obviously, going to move that memory counter over to one off the Ice Wall. But we weren't sure whether the Inheritable of the Angemon would then bounce the level 3 back. I was arguing that it wouldn't because the attack has resolved. Either way, it wouldn't matter because the minus 4k DP would persist through the Vmon anyway and delete it. And I believe the Sylphimon could also delete a minus 5k anyway, so when attacking the Lydramon, you could delete the minus 5k and the swing over the Vmon. So it really didn't matter. Either way, that Vmon was leaving the field. Uh, but hit me up down in the comments and let me know. Does that Angemon have the ability to bounce an Armor Purge Digimon after the attack resolves if it is targeting it? Either way, we're going to be seeing an EX1 Vmon go up back in Raising Area. So we go up to three memory, obviously nothing on the field, so no bonus from the Davis and Ken. And now I really do not have blue and green. We're just going to pop that Chimeramon straight away. Do have that Davis and Ken to meet both color requirements, even though we are now running low on Ragemon to play. Just seeing the rookies come out. And something that these later games, it's the first one on the channel, but one of the last games we actually played before EX2 officially came out, unfortunately, obviously, is delayed in the UK. So we'll be seeing a couple more BT8 games whenever we have time. Uh, playing with the aggression a lot more with the rookies, just willing to trade them into security has been something that she's been doing a lot better. The Ankylomon will come out, and now pondering whether to swing in. She is going to commit to it. Go straight in, hits a Davis and Ken, so we'll survive, and the second one's going to see a Fire Rocket, so both Digimon making it into the next turn. No blockers on the field to get deleted by the security effect. I see EX1 Vmon come out now, plus two memory off of the back of the two Davis and Ken. Gonna see Vmon calm it down once again, start searching for these two color cards, get the Magnemon in hand. That's so why I really do like the BT8 Vmon, is not only once you found your Davis and Ken, it's cycling through even more cards to find your Digivolutions. I use the ST9 one if I'm looking for the Vmons themselves, but if I'm looking for Armor Digimon, then V 
BT8V1 just makes more sense. We're going to be seeing that Magnemon that we picked up go back up for a two cost thanks to the Vmon Inheritable. And it is going to swing over the Ankylomon just to really get that board cleared. Swing into that Salomon earlier in order to make sure it was rested without having to chance what was happening in security. Just slowing down the game a little bit here because I am down 1 to 4 in security. And once again, a blue memory boost is going to come out. It really came down to whether I wanted to Digivolve over the BTA Vmon to deny the memory from the Sora Joe or just make sure to play my own game and set up for my own aggressive turns. She's not going to be able to do anything with this extra memory as is. She is going to be setting up her nursery this turn, having promoted in the last one. I felt like it was worth leaving the Vmon on the field. Give her the extra memory, let her build up a big body in raising that she can't do anything with. And then start my aggression on the next turn. We've got two Davison Kens to play with and a blue memory boost. So even though I'm down four, feeling pretty confident I should be able to play for game. Magnemon on the field as well as that Vmon that's just going to be chilling. She's going to go down to one memory off the Angemon Digivolving. And now the question is, is she going to commit to some board clear and hand over some memory? Or are we just going to try and set up wide for a counterattack of our own? Really thinking about it now as we go in. Potentially last turn up for grabs. Especially if she chooses to go wide here. Just needs two attacks, put something out. Leave it standing. As long as Elijahmon doesn't come out to rest it, then should be able to keep it on the field for Angemon to then swing over. Maybe go for a DNA Digivolution, depending on what's up for grabs. Plenty of options to go into here. We do see the Shakurmon in hand as well. I know she wants to go for that next turn. And we are going to go for that Wyvern's Gambit. Puts down the Wyvern's Breath. Hands over seven memory to play with. And she's basically offering me do or die. Can I win in one turn? Or will we crash out in the next one? So there was a slight mistake with the memory counter here. Forgetting to do the start of main phase. Blue and green boost. So it should be up to memory. So in editing we do have the correct memory counter even when we do go back to check memory uh slight mistake on the order of things because as you can see blue memory boost goes up now which would only give me one memory rather than two because of the time that it was cracked but luckily even after this slight mistake all of the plays that would go through would still be able to be performed with the amount of memory that was available flames are going to come down for two and as it's happened many times, Fire Rocket not long behind. Flamethrower going to swing twice into security, hits that win rate, and then Dino Humon, so it's going to survive for the two checks. We're going to see Armor Texture come down, and Flamethrower comes out once again. Thanks to the Flamethrower when attacking being 3,000 for the turn, it's naturally at 8 and then swings for 11, which is exactly what we need as the Reinforced Memory Boost comes down and the TK will also come out. We are at five memory here, rather than the four. And this is where I realized that there was probably a mistake with the memory because I'd theorized the turn before how I was going to be able to play things out off the back of having a Ragermon in hand. But when looking at it at this point, I realized something has gone awry here. And that's when things slow down as I try and figure out how the turn was supposed to progress so a little bit of a pause here which otherwise would have been a pretty fun turn we've had the wyvern's gambit happen a couple of times but we'll clear the board with a wyvern's breath and see how much damage can you do in one turn if you can win it you can earn it otherwise i will perish don't always work but when it does it's always a fun video and it happening off camera was really what prompted us to start recording games when we did play them at work so looking forward to seeing a couple more of these happen in future, especially with better camera work. So we're just going through how all of the Digivolves went down, and I incorrectly did the blue memory boost timing wrong here, so it says that I have one more memory than I actually do. So refer to the memory counter on top as the ST9 Vmon comes down, that leaves us with two memory. 
and checking for three. Not going to take the Pyrodrum on, just going to get a Magnum on just in case anything went wrong. We're going to go into the Lydrum on for two, leaves us on exactly zero memory. And the Pyodramon will come down and swing for game. So after two very close fought games, it's going to be a 2-0 in favour of the Armour Rush. Definitely suck to see the game kind of end on a little bit of a whimper having to do that memory counter, but a well thought out turn. You can see the deck list here for the Shakum on control. And the Armour Rush deck that was being played at the time. Hope you guys have enjoyed the videos. It's going to be hopefully making more Digimon content at least once a week. You can follow me on the socials coming up below and I'll see you guys in the next one.